Now is psychotherapist Kelly Kitley with more information on this disorder. Great to see you. Good to see you too, Molly. What is postpartum depression for people who aren't familiar with it? Well, it's a mood disorder, and the way that I like to explain it to people is that postpartum depression is an umbrella, and underneath that is postpartum anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder with intrusive thoughts perhaps, panic disorder, and so there is a wide spectrum as opposed to oftentimes people look at postpartum depression as some uh, catastrophic event related to depression. Well, and some people call it the baby blues, mm -hmm. and, but I feel like that refers more to something that's sort of passing and not as serious. Is that accurate? You're absolutely right. Baby blues, many women experience, and it usually passes after a week or two. But really, a qualifier for postpartum depression is having symptoms for two weeks and beyond. And, and it's always after the birth of a child. Does postpartum depression necessarily mean after birth? And is there a certain limited time frame? Sure. So that is also something that I think is a misconception that a lot of times women, you know, make it to their first OBGYN appointment at, when their baby's six weeks old and they're like, whew, I, I'm, I'm good to go. I haven't had any symptoms, but it really can last up until a year after some has a baby. And what are some of the symptoms or signs that someone has it? Um, crying for no reason, really feeling overwhelmed, not able to sleep in spite of being so exhausted. Um, sometimes it can look like rage or irritability, um, lack of concentration or confusion. Was there a reason you thought this would be a good topic for today or why it came to mind for you? Absolutely. I've been seeing some things in the news that have really been focusing on some catastrophic events. There was um, a local story in the Chicago News about a woman who had jumped out the window with her child and then had drowned another child in, a, in the bathtub. Mm. And, and I, that's so shocking for people to hear. It's Those so stories are shocking. Well, and it's also a way that I think women compare and they say, oh, that's postpartum depression. I'm not that bad. Mm -hmm. And if we just look at it at, in extreme cases, there's so many women who go untreated or feel a lot of shame and don't report their symptoms. Well, it's interesting you say that because Alanis Morissette has been public about her now third um, experience with postpartum depression after the, I think she had her first child in something like 2010. But what she talked about is, you know, having a variety of symptoms from sadness, sleeplessness, irritability, um, feeling of hopelessness, anxiety. Um, but what she said, and I think it's such a great point, is that if we miss all those people who have a more or a less severe case where they're not psychotic mm -hmm. and killing their children, Children, we're missing this opportunity to support many women in our lives who experience some level of postpartum depression. Absolutely, and it's so important what, with, when somebody like a celebrity comes forward and explains what's going on for them because they have such a large platform to really influence so many people, and it also humanizes them a little bit. Yeah, and I wonder what we can do, you know, because she said, you know, we need to be like a village around um, new moms mm -hmm. and really support them in a much different, um, um, more compassionate way. What do you think are some things that we can do to support women who, who have postpartum? Well, a lot of women have a hard time accepting help. And so the person who can be at the front line is somebody like a mother, mother-in-law, or a spouse who is actually observing what's going on and being able to say, how are you doing? And really open up the opportunity for a safe space for the woman to talk about it, um, to be able to lend a helping hand and maybe take the baby for a while so mom can sleep. Um, I also suggest resources. OBGYNs are usually the first person that a woman comes in contact with after she's had a child. Um, pediatricians as well. So mm -hmm. really just being able to be real and authentic about the transition as opposed to sometimes people say to women, oh my gosh, isn't this the best time of your life? Right, and then you feel bad because yes. you think, yeah, especially I would think people who struggle with infertility or they've had a lot of assistance with getting pregnant and then they have postpartum in their depression, they're like, what is wrong with me? I should be so thrilled that this happened and I have this new baby and what's the matter with me? And it's not a choice. It's not, I'm choosing to be sad. Um, it is really hormonal and the best treatment for it has a tendency to be psychotherapy as well as medication. I was gonna ask you that. And I also wonder, does it always lift after a year? 
Um, well, then it goes into a different category, say major depressive disorder or an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of women do report feeling so much better. That's an area that I specialize in my practice. And the shift that I see once women can get really honest and accept the help is amazing. I bet accepting help is huge. It is hard to do. I think and you want to do a lot of things yourself. So I think it's a great tip. Thank you for sharing